boop, 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 bobbing along. Hi, we're Stuart and Emmy, and we're child-free after infertility. So we decided to change our life plans and moved on to a narrow boat. We're sharing our adventures here, and you're welcome to join us. This week we have a bit of a scare and do some urgent DIY that we shouldn't have put off. And we enjoy walking into the little village of Brinklow. There was a load of water in our engine bay off on one side um, and it was wet down the side of the hatch so it's probably time to redo the uh, hatch seal as well which never done but it looks pretty simple but I think when we do that this is pretty rusty around here I think it's time to do that job as well um, yeah it's time it's a beautiful day for a cruise we're heading off through rugby today hopefully getting to the village of oh I want to say Brinklow. We've just been, we've been and done, emptied some cassettes this morning and we just want to push on. So suddenly there was a clunking and Stu peeped into the engine bay to see if it was anything in there and it, the, it was filling with water. Um, so we've pulled over the side, it's not a great place to be, it's... Uh, so Stu's pulling us forward now to somewhere we can moor up and have a proper look. He did find a lot of stuff in the weed hatch the last time we cruised, so I'm not sure if there's some prop. it's definitely come in from there again, so whether it wasn't done up tight enough, even though it was, we Stu double checked it so many times because he's paranoid about <laughs> Uh, the weed hatch being closed tight enough or if something else has gone in and messed it up not sure yet last time it went all the way into that side and it's all just on this side which is good it definitely has come from here you can see where the edge of that t-shirt is all wet where it's coming through the lid Okay, I've pretty much mopped out in there. Stu already did a little test where he put the boat in forwards to see if any more was coming in and it wasn't, but he's very nervous to carry on now. We've tested it, we've put it all back together, tested it on tick over, it's fine, but we're just gonna have to be really careful. We're gonna have to go quite slowly, I think, um, and just keep a really close eye on on that because uh, that's one of the main ways that boats sink um, we're gonna have to repair it we're gonna have to put a new gasket on it I really hope we don't have to stay at this spot because there are far too many yappy dogs so that has put an end to I don't even know if I said but I was trying to do the entire cruise today uh, but I'm quite happy with what I've done and um, yeah, it feels good that Stu takes over now and I'm the one that keeps checking inside. Let's have another check now. Still good, still good. You were doing so well as well and you handled that brilliantly well when Thank we realised that was, you got us onto the bank got us where we needed to go it was a difficult bank to get onto as well and you handled the stress and pressure better than I did to be fair <laughs> as it seems to be fine we're going to push on to our to Brinklow our intended very That's slowly slowly yeah because we need to get water and also we should be near boatyards if we do need to uh, do any work um, because we might need to, we're thinking we need to replace the seal on the weed hatch. I'm not sure how yeah. long they're supposed to last. I did expect it to last longer than a year, but maybe so, maybe yeah. it is an annual thing. It's only a bit of compressed foam, so. So what, what Stu thinks happened is, because basically there was a clunk, Oh, I thought you were going to oh. break in. 
So what we think happened is there was a clunk and then Stu checked and there was water rushing in. I think what happened is something must have hit our um, propeller and knocked the weed hatch up and then water then obviously comes shooting in from the propeller actually moving um, and it just it wasn't resealing until we properly stopped I mean it probably wasn't coming in anymore once the propeller wasn't turning but yeah very scary because obviously if we hadn't realized like what happened before there's just water flooding into our engine bay. This seems like a good spot. I'm about to become a real boater because I'm going to put my hand in the weed hatch for the first time. Oh, I can! It turns out... Oh no, wait, am I tightening it? No, you're not. Is that... It feels like I'm tightening it. Ah, that's really sharp. Yeah, it is. That's why that, partially why that cloth is there. Oh, well thanks. Thanks for telling me. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> so when you put your hand in, okay. you'll feel the propeller. Okay. And behind that, there's like a little bit between the propeller where it goes in. Actual shaft itself, there's like a little gap between the back of the propeller and, is it sharp? and the shaft. No, it's not sharp. But that's where stuff tends to get caught. I can't see anything. No. Yeah, I don't feel anything. No. So this is what we're going to... We don't have a new seal at the moment. Which is what... that bit under there. Hang on. Is it seeing it? Yeah. Yeah, this squishy. Yeah. But this is all rusted and pitted, so we're going to clean this up and hopefully it'll form a better seal with the seal. Yeah. Yeah, I think if you just scrape off as best as we can and then we'll hit it with the... Um... Wire brush. Metal filler on. We filled around the edge, particularly that back bit where it's quite pitted, because also we've noticed before when it's come in slightly, it's coming on one, like just in those corners. Um, I'm gonna put some of this rust inhibitor on it next, around the edges, and on the inside here where it's just started to pit a little bit as well. And then we're going to try and get a couple of coats of primer on it before we go to bed, I think. I think before we go to bed, it's only 4.30. I am literally waiting for paint to dry. The first coat of primer. So exciting. I feel really anxious about leaving the hatch. Um, even though I know it's fine, like water's not going to suddenly start shooting up and into our boat, most likely. But still, not okay. Second day of trying to sort out our weed hatch. I've put a second coat of primer on there, which is all good. I've actually ended up pulling this out, and I'll tell you why in a sec, and um, scraping it back to mostly bare metal. It's not completely bare metal, but it's pretty close. Um, and I'm going to repaint the top of it, and I'm going to uh, prime the base of it, and then bitumen it. And the reason why I'm gonna do that is because lovely person on the boat behind us gave me some new Christ gave me some new seal 
um, which is awesome because that saves me a journey later so I can just try and get as much paint on as possible. I'm a bit nervous, I'm sure it's fine, but a bit, a bit nervous about like leaving the weed hatch off overnight. I know that's really stupid and there's no reason why anything should happen that should lead us to flood the boat, but I'm not gonna worry about that. I'm just gonna, <laughs> I'm just gonna try and get it done in a day, basically. This is what I saw other people doing. Makes sense. Beautiful. But that does get a nice tie. Yeah, that looks great. Yeah, before it was not tight. <laughs> Seal, beautiful. This will be pink soon. Oh, and there's the freshly done hatch thing. How's that feel? Yeah, what we think we need, what I think we need to do one day while we're moored up, while we're here. We'll turn the engine on and we'll give it some good grunts forwards and backwards and see if that causes, because that will let us know like roughly how tight we should have it. Okay. Because he was saying that we shouldn't have to have it ridiculously tight for it to be sealed, which is... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good morning on Sunday. It's a few days since we've arrived in Brinklow or near Brinklow. It's about uh, 40 minutes, 45 minutes walk along the towpath. Um, there would be a more direct route along a road, but with no path. So we prefer the longer way around. We go in for a walk and then we're gonna meet my parents and sister for a little trundle and a drink, I think. A trundle, what do you mean? A trundle, like a little walk around the village. We're going for a walk, and then we're meeting my parents for a trundle. <laughs> an amble. Is that what you meant to say? <laughs> it's the same, isn't it? A trundle, an amble. I'm not sure. Uh, it's probably confusing, considering we call our trolley the trundler. <laughs> <laughs> that is what threw me. <laughs> yeah, so we're going for a walk, and then an amble. Okay. <laughs> Let's see your sad blackberry. <laughs> Two sad flat boys, thank you. <laughs> Steve's gotten a bit, a bit excited. They're not, they're not really ready yet. Here's some. This was once like an access into Brinklow. So once upon a time you could take this all the way into Brinklow and drop off your grain or coal or whatever. Blackberry jackpot. Oh, this is a real blackberry jackpot. Woohoo! Oh, very delicate pink flowers. Looking good. Mm. We saw lots of bunnies on this walk the other day and hopefully we'll see some again and if not we'll insert our really bad bunny footage from the other day. <laughs> what was that face for? How uh, sad if we don't see bunnies. Oh. <laughs> okay. Time to turn off the towpath into the woods. It's wonderful. 
Brinkler was a cute little village on the outskirts of Rugby with an excellent village shop that does really good ice cream. It's, what is it, is it 8pm now? It's mm. eight, something like 8pm, it's still so lovely and sunny. Mm. Stu's family have left now, we had a lovely time Bye -bye. with them. <laughs> We're just going to have a relaxing evening now because uh, we've got a big cruise to do tomorrow. We are probably going to leave, set off quite early. So, uh, it might take us all day. We're going to head to hopefully the other side of Nuneaton. All day? What? Is yeah. that, does that not sound right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much for joining us this week. Next time we'll be heading to Nuneaton, please do come along. Have a lovely week! So now Stu has made pancakes with foraged blackberries. Yeah.